Dungeons and Daddies is a rowdy, horny, violent podcast for grown-ups. Content warnings can be found in the episode description. Welcome to Dungeons and Daddies, a non-BDSM podcast about daddies, roleplay, and leather goods. Uh, thanks so much, by the way, to everyone who has left iTunes reviews or tweeted at us at Dungeons and Dads. It uh, helps get the word out and is very encouraging for a brand new podcast like this one to see that kind of response from all you folks. So thank you so much for everyone who's written in in the past uh, couple of weeks. I'm Freddie Wong, and I play Glenn Close, a rock and roll cover band dad slash bard and a fun fact about glenn uh, glenn is a uh, pretty bummed out that his uh wonder wall rendition didn't work out the way that uh, he hoped it would because normally it works every time at least for at it least in his life <laughs> <laughs> i'm matt arnold and i play daryl wilson a stay-at-home sports dad who has come into his own as a barbarian and he's beginning to think he might miss his wife more than she misses him <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm Will Campos. I play Henry Oak, Granola Burke, Bernie Bro, <laughs> Vegan Dad. Uh, and fun fact about Henry, boy, oh boy, did he find a use for them condoms. I knew they were going to come in handy. Uh, they are on my fingers to protect me from the weird uh, druid stuff that I don't understand what is happening to me that is happening by flying out my fingers. So I've got condoms on my hands. Hey, what's up? I'm Beth May. I play Ron Stampler, uh, emotionally restrained stepfather, crying internally all the time, sustaining internal damage from cringing emotionally at every moment. Fun fact about Ron, he does not have any leg hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Like medically or by choice? <laughs> One of each. <laughs> See, the left, it's medical. Okay, okay. But the right, it's like, for fun. You gotta right. even him out. He's yeah, not gonna be some sort of pervert It's like, with it's like gluten-free on the right and celiac on the left. <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, I'm Anthony Birch. I'm your daddy master, and I was I was a hundred percent certain that we were gonna get kind of gay. I was not a hundred percent certain it would happen in literally the very first episode. Welcome to episode two: the ties that bind. Okay, so we're not going to do traditional XP awards. I'm just going to do milestone-based leveling. So uh, instead of giving you guys XP for doing the dad jokes, I'm going to instead give you inspiration, which if you don't know what it is, uh, it means whenever you want to, you can spend it to get advantage on a roll, which means you roll two dice and take the better rather than the lesser of the two rolls. I feel like you're hurting the star student after he gets the A plus <laughs> in the class. and like, okay, well, now we're going to grade the papers this way. Did like, you not oh. make a dad joke, spend the thing, and then do another dad joke so you could do it again later yeah. in the episode? yeah. I don't even, I still don't know how it works actually after hearing that because it's I wasn't fine. paying attention. Just do attention. a dad joke and other people will be harmed around you, but you'll get a benefit later on. This is great. Very method. So you now know where all of your children presumably are. Which one or, or ones would you like to go for first? My children. <laughs> I'm just going to put that out there. I have two children, so they're all, they're both that's in the same true. space. So that's fractionally, we can rescue the most amount of the children first, <laughs> which seems like the most efficient, just if I'm but being completely objective about it. If you lose it. one, it matters less. <laughs> <laughs> that's so. true. That's a, that's a good idea there, Henry. I just like to think that we won't go for my kid first. Because yeah, if we find my seems, kid, I will have to eat his skin. I so. think we could use a little bit more time to maybe suss out what's going on there and maybe a way out of the dumb curse that he got us into. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay with Will's. I mean, like, I feel like... Who's? Sorry. Who's Will? <laughs> Henry. Oh, Henry, I feel like your kids uh, are cool. Cause like, I want to know more about this Will guy. He sounds pretty cool <laughs> if you're willing to rescue his kids. I'm just saying that uh, I think my kid's going to be just fine. He usually, you know, figures stuff out, so I'm not too worried about my boy. I know for a fact that Terry Jr. is better off without him. <laughs> um, no, Terry Jr., that was weird. When you called him, he seemed pretty unfazed. Y yeah, but I don't want to talk about <laughs> I don't want to talk about feelings. <laughs> Uh, okay, so, well, I believe my two beautiful boys, Lark and Sparrow, are in a place called, let me, let me get the list out here again, and I pull it out of my pocket, like, Neverwinter. Uh, sounds like we should pack our shorts, boys. <laughs> Everybody no, take no. a D for a no, damage. No. I have no... <laughs> you can't do two in a row. You're killing me. <laughs> the only thing I would like to say is Daryl Wilson did not take that as a joke, and he instantly opened the back and pulled out... Some cargo shorts. <laughs> yeah, some shorts. <laughs> 
I have two hit points, please, God. Oh, Freddy. He took four. So what I'm does at, that... Well, yeah, what does this mean? <laughs> okay. So basically what happens is that as the pure psychic force of the dad joke <laughs> enters your brain, your brain in a fit of self-preservation just shuts itself off and you fall unconscious to the ground for a moment. Okay. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I, I I don't know if that was the joke or all the drugs he's been taking since we've been here, but uh, I think I think Glenn's down for the count. Back away, back away. I know what to do. I pull out. Uh, Daryl Wilson pulls out a first aid kit. Uh, 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 Henry, why don't you prop his head up, buddy? I prop his head up. Uh, do we have healing stuff? Uh, yeah, basically because you have the you brought the first aid kit in, we're gonna treat that like it's a healing potion, and you can just do a medicine check on him. Or you know what, boys? You know what we should do? We should just sleep for as long as it takes to get all of our HP back. <laughs> you could take a long rest at an inn, yeah, if you want to. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I think maybe we should sleep one off. It sounds like uh, old Glenn here has had one too many. Maybe we can just carry him over to a local inn and yeah. we can all tuck in for the night. I'm pretty bushed from all that fighting and kissing I the did. The rooms, are they double rooms or single rooms? <laughs> How many beds in a room? I, we, do we have gold? Well, we don't have any currency for what this world is. I'm, I'm assuming willing they don't, to pay whatever it takes. I, I'm assuming they don't take Discover, which is all I carry. That's my God. diner's club card. So, um, You're a time traveler from 1997. <laughs> I, by the way, I love the idea that you guys are like weakened and burning at me across. This seems like a pretty old timey kind of place. Like, uh-huh. you know, back in, you know, the day in Earth history, you know, people I don't think really would have been phased by someone take, carrying an unconscious man through the street. That's, that's fair. What's uh, what's around us? So around you is uh, there's a weapon shop to your east. There is uh, what looks to be a group of people just sort of screaming at something uh, on the ground to to the west. And then to the to the north, there is pretty clearly what seems to be either a tavern or an inn or something that has a lot of, like, horses outside of it. I kind of look over at the people screaming. Uh, hey, what, what do you think's <laughs> going on with that screaming over there? Uh, hey, Henry, you want to figure that out now, or do you want to bring uh, Glenn and uh, uh, revive our nearly dead friend? Tell what you got, I'll catch up with you guys. I'm going to check out this screaming. That sounds like something we should be abreast of. I'll, I'll double back and find you, though. Why don't you uh, roll perception? Okay. I got a three. <laughs> okay. So uh, you can't tell what it is from here. If you want to see what they're looking at, you're going to have to like get in the crowd. Ron, do you want to go over with uh, with uh, our boy Henry? Ron, I bet something really weird and fucked up is going on in this crowd. <laughs> you want to check it out with me? Uh, actually, I'd like to stay with Glenn, uh, just watching him sleep and thinking that must be nice. I drop the body and I get away from Ron as quickly as possible, and I just start heading over with Henry. I just leave Freddie's body on the You're floor. So I, sa- I saunter up to Glenn and said, it's just you and me now, buddy. Um, okay, so when your body hits the flow, as it were, um, something gets rattled loose in your in your brain, and you come... You come. <laughs> you, 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 you regain consciousness. Uh, not enough to get up, but you're kind of groggy. Am I like one health? <laughs> you're at one health now. Okay. But you feel something different. Something has changed you. Mm. You don't know exactly what it is yet, but you can tell that something has changed. Interesting. Uh, but you're you're conscious enough to speak, but not move. Okay. So I'm, uh, I head over to the crowd. I okay. follow. So you see uh, cr- a crowd of primarily humans kicking what seems to be nothing like they're just you hear the sound of like impact of boot against flesh but it seems like they're just kicking just the air but you can hear a voice going like stop 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 please 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 come on come on you guys are being dick stop it stop it stop it daryl wilson's very excited he thinks they're playing a sport so i just jump <laughs> into the center and i go what are your boys playing i want to play i'm daryl wilson what what game is this so when you jump into the center do you jump in the center of like what they're kicking at or like in the of the people right next to them not where they're not where they're kicking because then i'd get kicked okay sure yeah uh, but i'm okay. talking to the two people kicking so a guy with a big old wart on his nose says, a fucking neutral evil creature came into our town. We don't do kindly to people on the neutral evil alignment scale. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, Henry, this this sounds like one of your type of people. Why don't you it, come over and talk to them? Uh, uh, so you're, you're, you're just beating someone, but I don't, who are you beating? We don't see anyone. Oh, you guys must be from uh, Waterdeep. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, you don't get it all fairy dragons up in water deep, I assume. Fairy dragons? Yeah, no, no, absolutely not. Those are totally normal. We've seen fairy dragons all the time, but not at water deep, where we're from. So so your confusion is then <laughs> explained by what? You seem to be very confused about the cloaked creature. I apologize for my friend. He's low on <laughs> glucose at the moment. Uh, we, we would love to know more about these fairy dragons. Uh, so as you say that, um, the thing that they're kicking with a shimmer decloaks and you see what is basically a 
if it were standing and not crouched in the fetal position, it would be up to your hip in terms of height. It's blue and scaly and very bruised, and it's what is clearly to your eyes a small dragon. Mm -hmm. um, it has these brown bracelets around both wrists and one of its ankles, and uh, it looks at you with the closest you can assume to what a dragon could do is sad puppy dog eyes. And it goes like, could you get them to, to stop? To, this, the people here are just very rude. Please make them stop. Well, that ain't no football. That's, a <laughs> That's so astute, Matt. <laughs> uh, yo, uh, uh, Daryl, I, I think we should intervene here. You know, this seems like a kind of mob justice type of thing. And, you know, I know we're trying to get our sons back, but, you know, what? who are we to our sons if we don't lead by good example when they're not around? <laughs> Where have you, buddy? I stand in front of uh, the pimple nose guy or whatever and the dragon. Okay. I go, hey, stop. <laughs> uh, roll persuasion. Unless, are you trying to be intimidating? No. <laughs> not, that's, not intimidating. <laughs> that's how intimidating he is. Yeah. <laughs> not even try. Yeah, go ahead and try persuasion. That's a seven plus minus one is a six. <laughs> so he goes, no, and then goes back to kicking him. I, I can I assist his his role? Will yeah, you can help? try. You can try again. You, you okay. start, start over. You have to just try a different tack okay. than what you try. Um, all right, all right, all right. I come and I say, "I'll lick any man in this crowd. I'll beat him to the ground." Are you going? Are you going to lick us? Or are you gonna, are you going to? I mean that in an old timey sense of licking is in fighting. But if if I beat you, I'm going to lick your face. All right. Uh, roll intimidation. Thirteen plus one, fourteen. Can I assist him? Yeah, go ahead. And you better watch out because his licks are poisonous. He doesn't have he doesn't have any relatives anymore because he kept licking their faces and now they're all dead. Now like you'll be. Now you got to roll bluff, and if you fail, you're gonna hurt his roll. <laughs> What's bluff? Uh, oh, great! We're off to a great start. All right, deception, I think it might be deception. That is a six minus one. Oh, God. Yep, total poison. So it feels like just <laughs> just off the top of me dome, <laughs> speaking to you two, it feels like you're good at lying. And you're really good at fucking up his lies. <laughs> so maybe the next time you try to do something like this, you want to game it a little bit better. But uh, no, fuck off. And the, the dragon looks at you and goes, I have kids. They, I, I, can't, I, I, just, I lost my kids. I came in here looking for my kids and no one will. <laughs> <laughs> Concern it, that's it. And then, I, and then a feeling comes over me. Oh boy. And I hear <laughs> words in my head and my eyes roll back and my hands slam into the ground. This might be, this is kicking off the episode with a bang, guys. I'm sorry, but I can't think of anything else to do to stop these people. That's good. I cast Thunder Wave. Whoa. A wave of thunderous force sweeps out from you. Each creature in a 15-foot cube, because that's the crowd, because yeah. I'm in the middle of the crowd, Yeah. must, ooh, okay. Wait, are you trying to kill everybody? No, I'm trying to knock them away. Though, although they do take a lot of damage. Okay, maybe this wasn't the. This was like they're gonna take two d eight damage. I would assume that would kill everybody. In the uh, not necessarily. Uh, and the, it pushes everyone away ten feet away. If okay. I, okay. All right. Fuck it. I'm doing That's it. That's fine. I don't understand my powers yet. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, so I cast Thunder Wave, and uh, so basically, everyone in the crowd has to make a saving throw, or they take two d eight thunder damage, and they get shoved ten feet away. That's Is this too. mitigated by the condoms on your hands? I, I pulled the condoms. They I flipped the condoms. That's how you know like, shit's getting real. No, no, I think maybe they just blast off when I do it, and they weren't going to help <laughs> in like, any way. Yeah, like, a, like, a, like a child walking by just gets a condom in the you face. Know, yeah. With a horribly wet slap. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ten condoms. First, for the first thing that hits the crowd is, is ten condoms. <laughs> <laughs> the second thing that hits is pure biological lightning that hits all of, all of them, because I'm just rolling for the Should I group. save as Wait, in well? in the condoms? Is that what we're calling it now? What? Biological lightning? That's a good, <laughs> that's a good brand name, I gotta say. That's pretty good. Oh, no, it's from the... From his hand. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. From his fingers. <laughs> I like, I was... But if you want to start a brand of condoms called Biological Lightning. No, then... I want to start a brand of semen called Biological <laughs> <laughs> In your local freezer section. So yeah, they get hit with the, uh, the, the lightning and it blasts the crowd basically, not apart in terms of them dying, but like the crowd just scatters and sort of trumbles backward and, and hits the ground. And the guy with the wart uh, looks up at you and goes, Whoa, what are you? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, who's lying now, mister? I'm Daryl Wilson, and this is Henry Oak. Like I said, his licks are twice as poisonous as his lightning is. <laughs> Sparky. That, that, so That's distinctly I, not I do what you say, said. Did, did Daryl make a saving throw to avoid my lightning blast? Or was I, like, behind him? I assumed you were behind him. Yeah, I, I, when I saw you pull those condoms off, I definitely you knew that just got behind down. you. Okay, um, sure. okay, so, yeah, they run and they scatter. 
Um, and the, the fairy dragon looks up at you and goes, oh, thank you so much. Wow. I step in front of Henry and say, you're welcome. And I pick up, <laughs> I pick up, the, <laughs> how big is this dragon? You, you pick him up? Yeah, how big is he? Uh, he's, he's like hip height, so he's like a six, Okay, I, I like help him up, because I'm assuming he's kind of like beat oh, yeah. down on the ground. Yeah, uh, oh, thanks so much, thanks. Oh, oh. Yeah, I guess I, I'm, I'll be on my way then. Thanks for saving me. I don't know what you did that for, but that was nice of you. Well, wait one second there. You said you're from a little town called Waterdeep. No, they said you were from Waterdeep. Ah, yes, that's what I meant. I'm from Waterdeep. Where are you from there? <laughs> well, but I'm Daryl Wilson, by the way. And I put my hand out. Uh, he, he, he looks at your hand, not quite knowing what to... What to Just put your is, hand out too, little buddy. He puts, his, he puts the same hand, like the wrong sides <laughs> hand out. I smile, and I, put my, I switch hands. I, I don't ask Smooth. him to do it. I switch hands. <laughs> he switches with you. And I shake his hand. <laughs> I grab his hand with both my hands. Oh, okay. And I shake, and I said, this is how we say... Hello, where we're from. Waterdeep? Waterdeep, exactly. Okay. Yeah. I've never been to Waterdeep. So what's, uh, what's your name? Oh, my name is Gartok. 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 <laughs> it's a nice name. <laughs> yeah. Gartok. So, uh, you Henry, know. you have any questions for Gartok? <laughs> <laughs> Matt's in over his head instantly. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I'll say. One of you seems to be a very powerful warrior. Do you think you could help me find my children? I stand tall when he says that. Like, <laughs> He's trying to like look around you and make eye contact with Henry. Uh, you know, Gartok, uh, I, I think maybe we can. We're actually looking for our children as well. Oh, wow. Were your kids taken by the Lance? Oh, no, no. Not, my kids just ran. They, oh, um, well, sure. We could, you know, as fathers ourselves, we're forsworn to protect all children of all what? Uh, alignments, I guess. Oh, uh, man, is that how fatherhood works? I've been doing this wrong. <laughs> You know, it's sort of like fathers, I think, you know, have a, an obligation to all the children of the, whatever plane of existence they may be in. But yeah, perhaps perhaps if it aligns with our quest, we could help you on yours as well. Oh, what's your what's your quest? We're trying to get our kids back. Oh, where are you going? Uh, we are... You know, they said something about you being neutral evil. Yeah, yeah, they did. That's a weird kind of racist thing that people around these parts tend to say. Humans primarily, if they see something they don't understand, they're like, ah, he's like, evil, and then sometimes they get really specific about it. He's neutral or chaotic. It's oh, kind of just your so disposition. It's like a bigotry disguised as science. Like a, That's We exactly. have a thing called phrenology in our past. <laughs> it's, it's, it sounds similar. It's very similar. Uh, it's, they don't well, you like wouldn't know that it's similar because you I'm don't know I'm just agreeing I'm... with you. That's just how conversations okay. work. <laughs> Well, uh, we're gonna. We should, why don't we? Why don't we go introduce our friend Gartok here to the rest of the boys back yeah. at the inn? Or they're not. I mean, they're just standing in the street. What did Ron think? Hey, hey, Ron. Yeah. Ron, this is Gartok. He's gonna come with us on our journey. I'm Gartok. Okay. Hey, Gartok. I, I'm just coming to him. Like, what the fuck is that? Hey, Gartok. Do you know a good place to sleep around here? Our buddy Glenn there. Uh, he, he he's he's mighty hurt. Uh, is there a place we can recover? Maybe we can all talk. Maybe find a way to get all of our kids back. Oh yeah, yeah. There's the there's the uh, Wispy Woods Inn uh, to the to the north over there. We could probably. I mean, you could go in. I can't. Why not? The the town does not like me. I don't think they'll let me stay. In Why the, were you invisible? Uh, because that's that's a, a, a defense mechanism. So, buddy, just turn invisible. We'll bring you right in. That's a really good idea. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> All right, cool. So I pick him up. I don't know how big he is. Even if he doesn't want me to, I pick him up because ah. he just thinks I, he, he feels like a dog to me. So I just pick him up. And I'm like, hey, guys, let's, let's go to this inn. We got an invisible dragon. How rad is this? Okay, you walk in holding an invisible dog, <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll be right behind you. Let's go. All right, All he right. turns invisible. Okay, so you enter the Wispy Woods Inn, and it is pretty sleepy. There's uh, a drunk guy passed out in the corner. There's a couple of people playing what seems to be some sort of version of cards, and uh, a woman with a bandana behind the, the bar just sort of wiping it down with not even a towel, just her hand, just kind of like Ooh. doing an idly to waste her time. Gartok, I whisper to Gartok. Yeah, what's up? Is there is there perhaps like a uh, uh, like a, a, a review system for the inns in this town? And if so, if that review system had like a, a way of grading places, like say by a series of stars, like celestial out of celestial objects, perhaps uh, celestial objects. You know, how, how many stars out of five stars do you think this establishment would get? Uh, I mean, if I'm looking at this, there's no one dead and no one screaming. And it's quiet, so I'd probably say this. Is, this looks to be a four celestial bodies establishment. Okay, do you think they take discover, <laughs> like the act of learning any, something? Do I don't you, think they trade in like knowledge. Okay, there are some hotels Gar that do. Gartok, this is going to sound like a weird question because we totally know the answer. But just just as a refresher, what do you use for money here? <laughs> uh, it's just a little quiz. Okay, 
Yeah. It's, I'll play along. Yeah, what's this money? This is fun. We're having fun. Yeah, what's Are money? Are we in the end right now? Yeah, we're, yeah, in, we're the end. in the end. We're talking right here in the <laughs> so threshold. The, the, the bartender is looking at you <laughs> very quizzically. I kind of turn my back to the bartender so they can't see him just like whispering. So like, money, what is it? So she sort of shakes her head, goes back to wiping the bar with her hand. She licks her hand and goes oh. back to wiping the bar. <laughs> um, you, I mean, there's copper, there's silver, there's gold, precious metals. Some places work on the barter system, depending on, I not this place because this is fairly podunk, but some places operate on uh, uh, information or secret exchange or knowledge exchange or uh, experience exchange. Not in terms of like, exper- out like, of character. Like, not in terms of experience points, but like, I'll give you a new experience. Like music, maybe? Yeah, some places. Probably not this place. I don't know. Well, I, I haven't uh, spent very long here. Do we have money? You have uh, whatever American money you have on you. Oh, okay. Hey, Ron, um, I'm holding this dragon. Um, yeah. You want to go and uh, see if you can get us a room? <laughs> this seems like a job for Ron, I got to say. I'm no good when it comes to to, to charming. Wheeling and dealing. They and- do call me Ron the Room Getter. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go up to the, the, is there a front desk here? I mean, there's the there's the girl in the, at the, the bar. The bar. Actually, there's also a staircase I, leading up to what seems to be rooms. I want to talk to the girl at the bar. I want to roll and see if I can sense how lonely she is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> the look in her eyes, I feel as though I've seen it before. Roll, roll investigation. This is a six. All you see is your own misery reflected back at you. <laughs> and she begins to go like, are you okay, love? You, I, miss, you miss every shot you don't take, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I ask her... If I can make you a drink, can, that's can you won't make me a drink. Yeah, my uh, I used to make all my dad's drinks. You've had <laughs> interesting tact. You've had a few already, haven't you? No, no. It's just that I'm so used to making drinks for other people. Why don't you go ahead and roll persuasion? Eight. Uh, <laughs> I no, can see I, you're still I, on the fence I about feel it. Like I'm, I, that's not really how this works. D- Do you want a drink? I'll get you a drink. Dara Wilson is totally getting what uh, Ron's trying to throw down, and I take my last of the six pack of my pale ale and I slowly slip it to Ron, like from behind, like giving her a drink uh, that she can that he can pass on in front of the bar. Yeah, I'm trying to like I'm trying oh, okay. to hand you my pale ale, uh, and then I, I and then Ron's like. Yeah, you have a bar, but do you have this bottle of of <laughs> pale ale? Oh, oh, you want me to buy? Oh, you're a brewer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Can I okay. roll persuasion again? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. It's a new lie, so yeah. Thirteen. Okay. Generally, the way we go about this is you you pop the top off, you take a drink, so it's not poison, and then I'll take a drink, and then we'll sort of see. Okay. Uh. I wink at Daryl. I'm if very to, excited to as see if, to if say they like it's it. It's not poison, right? So, <laughs> uh, I don't know that it's a twist off. It is. And I um, oh, I, just chunk it. I just I I struggle with like keychains and then try to do the thing with like my teeth and stuff. I'm in a great deal of pain by the time I finally get this beer open. <laughs> Bar I, knows, I think I, I take, think it's a twist off. Take, <laughs> no, 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 no. I've I've drank these before, sweetheart. I know. <laughs> it's the gentleman's job to open the beer for the woman. <laughs> Could never possibly twist it off by herself. Uh, all right, so I got this. This, this bad boy open. Uh, actually, Daryl, could you open this? For, I, I would ask Kara, but <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, of course. Um, uh, I slowly pass the imaginary dragon to <laughs> to Henry. <laughs> oh, I try to stretch like it's really nothing going on. <laughs> I forget that the dragon is there, and I'm like, "What? What are you doing?" <laughs> and I go, "Oh, the dragon!" And then I grab the she goes, dragon. Surgery. What? Wait, uh, no, nothing. It's just, just a- we've been we've been dragging our feet and getting you these uh, drink. Here you go. Roll anyway. uh, roll persuasion with uh, advantage because that was a good good pun. Two, Two plus 12. Okay, 12. you're fine. Okay. Um, yeah, here, let me just twist this off for you. This is actually the best beer in water, Deep. And I twist it off and I... Oh, it's and- a twist off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, man, you brewski brewers, just like I am, I'm a brewer. Um, I take a sip and then it tastes bad to me because I don't even <laughs> like Bud Light. Ron can't even handle regular beer. But then I'm like, ooh, that's a... It's a good brew. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you passed her and she takes a swig. So you're going to roll. This is a big moment because we're going to determine how good your beer is for oh, the people shit. of of the D&D realms. Holy shit. So you're going to have to roll. When it says you can like brew stuff on your character sheet, what is, does it say? Like you get a plus to like, like what does that mean? Um, 
I just have a brewer supply. So I feel like that would be just like assorted yeasts. <laughs> Maybe medicine would be closer yeah, okay, to like mixing. Let's roll medicine. Uh, remember, you have inspiration. I am going to use my inspiration. <laughs> I was inspired. That's a 15 plus one. So 16. And it will keep that 16. Okay. So she goes, This is pretty, but good. This is not bad. How much can you sell? Um, let me look, Daryl. I know you don't know that much about brewing, but if you just had to guess how much, uh, oh, we could, uh, we got a, we got a whole bunch of barrels. Dead huddle, back. dead huddle, dead huddle. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. One second, we got to do a little brew huddle here and talk. Uh, um, we'll be right back. Okay, brew bros. Here's what I'm thinking. <laughs> We've got a whole mess of beer coming in tomorrow. We'll give her a good rate on it uh, in exchange if she lets us stay the night. From where? Where are we getting the from beer? From Waterdeep, Water Deep. where we're definitely from. That's a good idea. Oh, yeah. Okay. All okay. right. No, All right. I can I can do this. Cl- close the deal there, Ron. Okay, hands in the middle, everybody. <laughs> hands okay. in the middle. Well, no, you're holding the dragon, so you can't put your hand. <laughs> and, uh, Shit, that's right. Ron, why don't we just shake hands? Go for it. I Come sh- on, Ron, I- close it. Close okay. the deal, I'm Ron. Gonna sh- I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shake. I'm going to shake. Wow. All right. Wow. I... <laughs> I feel like something's changed within me too. Good, let's do it. Um, listen, sweetheart, <laughs> we got we got a whole load of beer. You ain't never seen beer like this before. We're, we're, tomorrow, <laughs> you're gonna drown in beer. <laughs> so, a, a number of barrels would be lovely if you could give me. 15 barrels. That is so many barrels. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. What's your what's your asking price? Uh, where is, okay, can we do another dad huddle, just real quick, just real quick. Uh, well, uh, one sec, we'll get right to you, we got another uh, shipment to another, uh, we, we, yeah, these shipments are popping off. All right, dad huddle, dad huddle. Dad. Gar talk, how much is like a barrel of beer around here? A barrel of beer would probably be around... Five, not eight silver. Eight silver. T- okay, someone else. What is eight times fifteen? Well, let's, uh, luckily, let's give it luckily, a good I'm, deal. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna burn. I'm gonna burn some of the battery time <laughs> on my uh, on my cell phone <laughs> as I pull out this magical device in the corner, the self illuminating device, and I tap into my calculator. Eight times fifteen, hundred twenty. Uh, roll a d twenty. If you get anything other than a one, you're good on battery. Okay. Four. Okay, so what we're gonna do is every time you use your phone, ah. you're gonna roll, and the number is gonna get higher. Ah, in terms perfect, of like perfect, two perfect, or lower. Perfect. perfect. Cool. Um, look, I, I I think since it is, I think it's pretty damn good beer. We should at least like say probably like ten a barrel. I think is fair for my beer. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This beer that doesn't exist that we're ripping this lady off. Yeah, let's let's say I, ten. I, right. I don't think we should say ten. I think we should probably go on the low end a little bit and try and get a room because I'd like. Yeah, but she's not to gonna sleep. buy. It. She tasted that beer. She knew that beer was she amazing. That. If we give it a bad, if we give it a low price, she's gonna be like. Well, that's not true because this beer, she probably thinks it's twice as much as a normal. Oh, that sounds like a good business decision, Daryl. Yeah. She, she okay. might also think you guys are really bad negotiators because oh, you've, okay. you've had two huddles in a while. Like she, <laughs> You can make her feel like she's getting one over on you or You're something. right. This is taking a while. Uh, Ron, let's just do eight a, eight a, eight Ron, a, it's your call. Yeah. Eight a barrel. Just say eight a barrel. I'll say, it's okay. your call, Ron. We're going to give you the Daryl Barrel special. That's <laughs> eight a barrel. Eight a barrel. Very fair. Very fair. Um, <laughs> well, obviously, I'm not going to pay you until it's here. So, um, oh, that's a problem. That, uh, you know, part of the Daryl Barrel special is that you give it to Daryl before he gives you the barrel. <laughs> I'll give you an advance of uh, yeah. two silver if you want. How about five? How about three? The how about the room? The room. Oh, how about how about yes, three and the room? You got yourself a deal. <laughs> Guys, we did it. Chief. I mean, <laughs> why did you say that? <laughs> That's an odd thing to say after a business deal. Um, you know, no, a little strange I, story. Uh, Ron here is a, a new a new member. I of, never uh, would have felt. Yeah, that. a new member. So this was, uh, this was actually his first uh, sales pitch. Oh, congratulations, Ron! So. It wasn't my first sales pitch. I'm a businessman, lifelong businessman, entrepreneur. Swipe right, sweetheart. So she. She like like with her hand swipes right on the bar, <laughs> like swipes to the right direction. No, no, don't worry about that. I'm just really glad to be doing business with you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so she seriously. Re- yeah, no, I, yeah. Are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the room? <laughs> it, so she uh, reaches into her apron um, and pulls out a, a, a bronze key, throws it on the table. The key has the the number seven on it, 
and uh, also throws out two very uh, dirty, sort of greasy silver coins that she like slides at across the bar at you, and they slide a little bit too easily, and there's like a liquid trail behind them. <laughs> <laughs> We're saying three though. Oh, three. Sorry. All right. Well, let's go to the room. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Ahead. Let's go check out this room at the end. Okay. Basically, you go up to your room. And it's a normal ass, uh, uh, but not great uh, uh, tavern in room. It's there's there's two beds. Who's sleeping with who? Um, I can be persuaded. <laughs> <laughs> Someone might have seen that Dar- that Daryl and I were married, so we should probably share the same bed. I think that Ron will sleep in the bathtub where water will blend in with his tears of loneliness. <laughs> Assuming that this also has a bathroom in it, it does now. Yeah, welcome to NBC Suites. Um, <laughs> oh, right. Well, this is a hell of a day so far, everybody. <sighs> yeah, I guess we should we should hit the hay, go to Neverwinter in the morning. Well, uh, I like where your head's at, Henry. Uh, two questions. Uh, Gartok, if you want to chime in, that's good, too. Where is Neverwinter? And two, we did promise a lot of beer to this lady downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we got to leave a little early and get out of here. Sure, um, sure. But sure. it would be nice to know what we're up to. Uh, well, vis-a-vis my whole thing with my children being gone, that's actually on the road to Neverwinter, so that's good to know. Oh, so oh, it's great. to the north. It's it's to the north across the mountains. But yeah, we should probably leave early, I assume. You didn't tell her when the beer would be coming in, though. So Is she expecting like a homebrew situation? or Unclear. She's expecting professional, incredibly tasting pale ale with a nice foamy top what, like she what, just had. What floor are we on? Are we on the second floor? We're on the second floor. Okay, maybe we could sneak out the old window. I've got some rope. Maybe we just peace out of here. Like, you know, once we've had a little rest, we just move yeah. on move on down the road. All right. Well, why can't we just walk out through the front? I guess we could. I feel our like dragon... she'd be suspicious if all of us left. <laughs> at the same <laughs> time. At the same time with all of our stuff. Dining and dashing, as it were, yeah. I think I like the rope idea. I like the, let's let's all take a rest, and then let's uh, sneak out here, crack a dawn, and make our way over to Neverwinter. Sounds like a plan. And uh, Guard Talk, before we go to bed, you might have noticed that um, we're not exactly from around here. Um, so, uh, but yeah, water we... deep. You said water deep. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. So none of this is suspicious to you at all. I mean, I've never been to Water Deep. I've heard people are weird there. We are, and this <laughs> is weird. So uh, the rumors yeah. are true. We, uh, you, you help us find our way to Neverwinter, and we'll uh, help you find your kids as well, right? Yeah. That sounds like a great deal. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go to bed, then. Oh, his kids are missing? All right. All right. Good night. <laughs> Good night, guys. So you all take a long rest, which means you get up to your max health. Everybody's Yay. fully healed now. Thank God. Noise. And uh, in the night, all of you share a dream. Ooh. Ooh. All of you are standing on the lip of a great crater. And beneath it, you see someone in a bright purple cloak pointing at the sky with one hand and pointing at all of you with the other. And when they speak, it's a booming voice that is horrible and yet somehow familiar. And you all wake up with a start. Fully healed, but it's not a, you didn't feel like great. Did we hear what the voice said? No, it just, it begins to say something. You can't remember what it said. Carol! (sighs) Oh, that was a weird dream. Oh, did you guys, did you, you had a weird dream too? Yeah. I had a dream about this purple robed guy who was like pointing at the sky and then pointing at me. And I think you guys were there. Also, I didn't have any clothes on uh, <laughs> and all my teeth fell out. I was naked. Uh, yeah, same. I was just stark raving naked. We were in kind of this place, but it was also my childhood, like elementary school. But then they pointed at the sky and then said something weird. And then I woke up. So you guys, you all had that dream. I mean, we all have that dream at some point in our life. But <laughs> you guys all had that dream last night. Um, yeah, I, I saw a man wearing my, my father's bright purple cloak. (laughs) His bathrobe. His bright purple bathrobe that he always wore. Wow. So we all saw Ron's dad. Bartok, did you have, did you dream about Ron's dad? No, I did not. (laughs) Consider yourself lucky. (laughs) Do dragons dream Gartok? Mm -hmm. Of course. Did he dream last night? What's a typical dragon dream like? Uh, there's a lot of... You know, you're you're flying, but one of your wings stops flapping oh. properly, and oh, then you're man. sort of falling like at an angle, and it's weird, and it's like, ah, oh, you don't want to hit the ground before you wake up. That's you, probably a, a metaphor for your career. That's what is. What do you do? Usually, dreams like that are like about like where you want to go in life. Oh, I mean, I'm a private business owner. Uh, I, I I own a labor company, construction company. Oh, labor. Uh, do you pay your labor? Oh God, no. Oh, that seems like that is kind of a thing in this world, like yeah. the the slavery. Hmm. hmm. 
Okay. Mm. Guard Talk, if you ever want to network or anything, <laughs> hit me up for coffee. Um, yep. <laughs> so we should probably we should probably sneak out of here. It's good. I can here. see daybreak. Can we roll like perception before we open the door to like get a sense of the window? Uh, are you going the window or door? Window. I uh, lock the door. I just double check and I lock the door, and then I want to do perception check out the window. Okay, go ahead and do that. That's a four. I'll do good one too. God. Guys, there's outside out there. <laughs> uh, perception. Ooh, this this is where I'm a trooper. Uh, Seventeen. Oh, okay. So you can see that there is one person walking around the perimeter of the, the tavern. So they're a guard. There's a guard. Okay, so we need to slip past this guard. Hey, Bartok, can you fly over there and like freak yeah, that dude out? His name's not Bartok, it's, it's Car Talk. <laughs> yeah, oh, like, the, like the NPR show. Like Click and Clack, the Tapper Brothers. I do you, dig do it. You know the, do you know the brothers Tapper it in this dimension? <laughs> what, in, what are you talking about? No, what? Never mind. Gar talk with a G, with a hard G. What do you talk? Oh, yeah, maybe car we, talk. Car talk. <laughs> gar talk. Car I, 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 I lean over to Gar talk and I go, they're liberals. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Car talk. Can you go over there and like car talk? Flip, flip, flip your flip your wings and stuff and like freak that guy out. Get him out of the way. I mean, I guess I could, but then he'd oh. probably scream dragon and everybody would try to kill me. Mm. Hey, Glenn. Yeah. You know what I like to listen to in the morning when I'm a guard? Is some sick tunes. I thought you were going to say some guard talk. <laughs> guard talk. Everybody, oh, take a deep four of damage. We just healed. We just healed. We'll fucking two damage. Okay, but, but Glenn Close, as the dad joke enters your brain, it's almost as if your brain has developed some sort of hard resilience to it. And bing, and it bounces off, and you only take half damage uh. from it. And you feel like some part of you has come to terms with the fact that you are a dad, and your life will be dad jokes. I only took one damage, y'all. <laughs> I kind of, you know what it is? I, I kind of like, I, I twitch a little bit, and I look over at Henry, and I go, that was a pretty good one. <gasps> oh, my God. I Someone took four left. damage. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so sorry to interrupt. You were I, I interrupted with a stupid joke. I've been trying to do that less lately. What if we like threw a rock and made them like go over where the rock sound was? I thought uh, you were the rocker. Uh, yeah. Oh! Everybody, you know what this to do. This is great, guys. You know what this to do. It's That's just an four, honor to be here. That's it's four an honor to be damage. Here. <laughs> Two damage there for me. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Daryl is upset and he just opens the window. He goes, uh, "Good morning, there, buddy." And I snap my fingers at Ron. To get the silver. Let me check the bathtub. <laughs> uh, hey, buddy. Good morning. Oh, I've got, I've got it. I've got it. Here's silver. Oh, thanks. Uh, hey, hey, sir. Good morning. Hey. Hey. Uh, Is this a bribe? Oh, no, just wondering, is there a good place to get some... Because uh... I'm down to being bright. Oh, cool, okay. Um, <laughs> well, that makes this easy. Uh, you mind if we just uh, leave through the window here? Yeah, how much you got? I got a, I got a two silver. Just right. a one silver, one silver. <laughs> Both of you roll persuasion, you with disadvantage. <laughs> okay. I got uh, 13. I got 11. Uh, so you just got 13? Yeah. He goes, so you probably got a little bit more than two? Yeah, we got, honest, honest to God, sir, we got uh, we got three. I'll take three. Everybody? All right, that's fine with me. Sure, easy come, easy go, baby. <laughs> so right. do you toss it down? We'll give it to you when we get down there. <laughs> Are you telling the truth? <laughs> no, we toss them. I say, we'll give you, I, I toss one down to him. I go, there's one, buddy. Uh, we're all going to get down, and once we all get down here, we'll give you the other two. I just want to make sure everything's up to... Are you telling the truth? Oh, absolutely. I'm telling the truth. All right, it seems fine. All right, cool. Let's go, guys. Okay. Throw the we'll rope climb over down, and, and then, climb uh, down. Mm -hmm. then I look at him. I say, promise you're not going to say anything? Uh, No. No what? <laughs> no what? No, I, I, I might. Oh. I think maybe we we were kind of on wrong terms about what the terms of this bribe were, because the bribe was to not say anything. Yeah. What did you think the bribe was for? That I wouldn't attack you. Oh, oh well, here's the thing: is that there are I am four so of us. Embarrassed. <laughs> there are four of us, and we do have a dragon. So, like, we could give you. You have a dragon. <laughs> oh my dragon! Dragon! <laughs> dragon! Knock him out! Knock him out! Knock him out! Knock him out! I try and knock him out. Yeah. I, yeah. Right. Roll, roll an attack with a. Uh, I guess you have surprise. Here. <laughs> Christ, man. Eleven. All right, so you hit him. Uh, what do you hit him with? I hit uh, I hit him with the the blunt end, like the like a, a the dagger, but not the sharp, you know, pointy bit. The, okay. The pommel. So okay. uh, roll damage for that. Uh, so mine says one d four plus three for the. Um... Okay, that'll be fine. That'll be enough. So you hit him, but not quite in time for him to not say dragon. So he hits the ground hard. Yeah. And you see a bunch of sort of bleary eyed drunks turning to look at you, 
No. Oh, yeah. And who's holding guard talk? I probably would have been holding him since. I guess we do. We don't need to hold him anymore, do we? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's invisible. He, he's I mean, just there. Okay, yeah. I guess he would just invisible. be standing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't but know why we he... were holding him to be. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> he just reminded me but of my I'm dog. Glad that we did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, they they sort of look at you. They see you've knocked the guy out. Woo! Well, guy drank too much. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. And they just kind of shrug, and they go about their day. I think it's time to go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, wait. Does he have one of our coins still? Oh yeah. We oh loot yeah. The we gotta get out of yeah, coins. Yeah. In fact, we loot the <laughs> shit out of him. <laughs> All right. So you get your you get your what three silver back, and then you get four more silver that he just sort of had on oh, him. Yeah. Oh. Uh, he's also got like a sword and um, some nice boots. I mean, I don't know if you want to like strip this guy naked, but in terms of immediately obvious things to take, is just the we'll money. take the money and the weapons. I'm gonna take the boots. <laughs> okay. take, Ron takes the boots. All right. Uh, they are definitely too big for you. <laughs> hey, Ron, those boots look pretty big for you. No, my feet are big. I have big man feet. I mean, <laughs> my my feet are as large and manly as I am. All right. Okay. Okay. So, um, do you guys just head back to the the van? Yeah, we're heading straight back yeah, to the van. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I'm holding. I am still holding Gartok, by the way. Okay. And and as we approach the minivan, I say, uh, <laughs> Gartok, buddy, if you're impressed with my beer, wait till oh, wait till I, you get a. You I, you were right. I didn't drink it. <laughs> but you saw the nice label and the twist. Like, Anyways, <laughs> get, get ready to get a load of uh, of what we got over here at Waterdeep. And I brush aside some of the Whoa. trees and reveal the minivan. What the, is the beast? That? Yeah, it's mine, buddy. You know what? We're going to let you sit in the front. Let's, what? let's all get in. What the fuck? What? I just. Is this a. What he is, didn't call shotgun or anything. It's like a horse? Like yeah, a, no. A, what is this? It's a big it's like a metal cart. horse like, that you climb inside of. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's mine, and I drive it. And there's chairs inside of its stomach. Yeah. That sounds convenient. Yeah, I put Gartok in the front seat. I go, this is where, like, the coolest person sits, like, usually where my son sits, but you can sit here now. So when you get into the van, Gartok says, we're, we're doing my thing first, right? The kids, my thing? It's on the way. Yeah, it's on the way, sure. sure. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. It feels like, I mean, it feels reasonable. Like, yeah, it'd be I weird for us to go and then come all the way back. So, yeah. Yeah. They're on the road to to Neverwinter. I'm not ex- sure exactly, but my guess is they're probably going to be like in a spooky cave or like in a, in a weird forest. Like, are any of you good at tracking? Can you find like, are you good at picking up on stuff like that? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm I think I'm good at that stuff. You know, I'm a geologist by trade uh, and I know my way around many a rock and brook and creek. Uh that would be like survival, right? Or what would? Uh, yeah, that would absolutely be survival. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can do that stuff. Perfect. Perfect. Gartok, what happened to your kids again? They got kidnapped? No, they ran. They ran. That's what, right. And, yes. And w- why? I don't know. Do you? Mm, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is that investigation? Yes. All right. I got a four. Seems like he's on the level. Uh, wow, he really doesn't know. Hmm. You know, maybe that's why your kids ran off, because you're not involved in, your li- in their life enough. Kind of fucking judgy, but okay. <laughs> yeah, Is come on, Henry. Try let, to let go of uh, Gartok. So Gartok, no, let's, I, I think I, I think he seems fine. He's cool as dragon, man. Like, let's just uh, let's wait, just wait, hit wait, the road. I want to I want to ask Gartok, what's your favorite thing about each child that you have? Like individually, my favorite thing about each one of them. Yes. Well, I like that Draken listens to what I tell him to do. I like that Sylvan will always make sure that the other two are paying attention when I speak. And that Reese will always fight anyone I ask him to fight if they are trying to hurt me or if I don't like them or if they're around or if they're not around. And I just kind of am bored. Hmm. Gartok, the way you said that, I felt like we maybe all should have taken notes on the exact thing each of your kids do. (laughs) But uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. I think I got it up here. (laughs) It sounds like it sounds like Gartok's kids do a lot for him. But what does he do for his kids? Did you try asking Draken, who listens to everything you say, to to not run away? Oh yeah, yeah. I uh, I I wanted to, but they they sort of they're they're clever. They 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 take after their old dad. They found a way to sort of bugger off where I couldn't. My uh, uh uh you know what? I'm done talking about this. Why don't we just go find my kid? Whoa! I get a <laughs> weird energy off of off, Henry, off of Gar Talk. Henry, Henry, what's the, the Gar Talk's helped us out, man? He's, he's you been know, a great that's guy. That's true. That's true. Yeah. It's been a long night and a long couple of days. You know, I'm just going to put blind faith in this strange, invisible dragon who everyone said was evil that we just met. I'm so, going to be real suspicious, but be quiet about all it. All right. So, Gartok, uh, where, where should we head? Uh, let's head north. All right. As everybody's in the minivan, uh, I really quick, I look at Gartok before I start the engine and go, uh, hey, but you a little hungry? You want like a little treat? 
Sure. I can. Yeah. Yeah. I look around. I double check to make sure nobody else. I say, hey, buckle your seatbelts. Ooh, ooh, good point. As they're buckling their seatbelt, I go to my secret stash. Okay. <laughs> and I grab one of my secret stash and I unwrap a piece of my secret stash <laughs> and I hand it over to Guard Talk. I say, take a chew of that. Okay. And he puts it in his maw and it's like, it's like, when does this, when is this done? I, 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 I put one in going. my mouth and I smile and watch what? him chew it. I just go, yeah, it's pretty good, right? And I start the engine. <laughs> it's kind of different. It's like a, it's like a challenge. This, yeah. they, I can hear them talking. Right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, can I have some of that Charleston chew? <laughs> what? <laughs> What are you talking what? about? What? Wait, uh, you I, guys are eating that Charleston Chew up there, the one you were eating earlier? What? Uh, I turn on the radio as loud as possible, and I start the static, car. static, right? Yeah, it's just static. <laughs> uh, no, not at all. That's not, uh, anyways. <laughs> oh, there's oh. snakes inside this beast? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's powered. start the car. Bam, bam, bam. It's powered by snakes. Huh. It's, there's a snakes on a very large bell. <laughs> yep. And we start heading south or north. Which way? North. Hey, guard dog, where are we going? North. All right. All right. Thankfully for you, the old uh, the old Honda Aussie has a built in compass, so you can actually t- discern which direction is which. Oh my god, this is just a long commercial for Honda. <laughs> <laughs> I glare at at uh, Henry the whole I time. Go, the- what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you drive north for about. An hour, a half hour, 45 minutes. Time kind of passes differently for you because everything's so new because you're seeing the sun kind of, it doesn't just move in a straight line. It kind of like sashays across the sky, like back and forth in a curve. Funky. You see the opposite of what you might see on Earth where, you know, there's like snow on the top of the mountain and then the rest of it's all brown. Like you, like there's just snow on the bottom of a mountain, but not on the top in the distance. And Gartok is just sort of bouncing up and down, anxious to get back to his kids. But eventually Henry notices a rock outcropping that could very well hide something behind it. It could be like a cave, could be something Suspicious inside Suspicious rocks, eh? Look yonder, gentlemen. What manner of strange rocks are these? Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is about a, uh, about a half a day's walk from where I lost my kids. That could be where they are, if you wouldn't mind stopping and going in and leaving me here. And leaving you here? I can't go in to get my kids. Okay, why, why, uh, why not? Why not? Mm-hmm. 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 I can't do it. Is it that you can't or you can't? I, I like can't. I like physically cannot. Hey, car talk, man. If we're going, if you want our help, man, you need to level with us fellow dads. Otherwise, I'm not exactly sure uh, uh, what we're walking into, my man. Car talk, this is a judgment-free, safe <laughs> space. No, I would, I would love to explain. He'd be, as he says, explain one of the leather bracelets on his arm seizes up and fire sort of erupts from it and burns him. It's ah, and Whoa, goes, ah, 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 ah. I, I just can't, just can't. Hmm. Oh. So what's up with that uh, bracelet there, Gartok? I bet he's not going to talk about it. Don't know. <laughs> oh. Uh, I inspect the bracelet. So uh, on the bracelet you see, you can't decipher it, obviously, but it looks like some sort of runes, some sort of etching that have been uh, uh, etched into it with a blade that go all around it. And if you look at the, um, the other bracelets he has, the other one on his other wrist and the uh, one on his ankle, they also have etchings on, but they're different rune etchings. So he's got different runes on the shackles. On the, on the three bracelets, yeah. Okay, and it's a language that I don't know. Correct. Okay. Hey, Guard Dog, I know you can't explain, but could you answer yes and no questions? Depends on the question. Could you nod or not nod? I guess we'll find out. <laughs> Is somebody controlling you? Uh, that's just a difficult one to answer, regardless of the situation. Of- yeah, man, because if you think about, there's so many systems of control. <laughs> you know, like society itself offers one layer, but that's just one of many ways that our lives are not free. You know what I mean? Does- that's a that's a really good point, Glenn. Uh, I think I would ask Bart a Gar talk. Uh, um, could we try on your bracelets? <laughs> Let me try to ah. let me just try it on. Let me just try to take it off of you. I mean, you know, if it's not controlling you. Uh, uh, ah. Ah, he just sort of makes noises and his eyes are trying to like communicate something, but they're just very big and he's a dragon so you're having a hard time say, seeing what that is meant to impart. Maybe we should uh should we try to take him off? I'm going to I'm yeah, I want to try. I think to Ron him. wants to take him off. I want right. to take him off. All right. Okay. So which one do you want to take off first? Um, there's one on his left arm, right arm, and then there's one on his leg. Let's do the leg one. Maybe we could put it in my boot or something. <laughs> okay. So as you begin to reach down to sort of grab it, he's like, his eyes are getting bigger and he's sort of beginning to shake. And 
you tug it off and it comes off super easily. Like it was just a piece of clothing. I'm also very <gasps> strong. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think we just killed one of his kids. Oh. Did we kill one of your kids? Ah. Uh, oh. <laughs> Oh, dang. Yes. Hey, maybe just put it back on. Just put it back on. Yeah. Put it back on, Ron. Put it back on. Put it back on. I put it back on. <laughs> he starts to cry. <laughs> oh, hey, no. this is awkward. I, I, hey. take, I take it off and then put it on the other foot. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like what is he's like gesturing at it like that doesn't make a difference. Hey, I'm hey, sorry, buddy. Sorry, buddy. I, hey. I, I, I hold Gartok and I hug him. I put on my sunglasses to hide the tears that are coming out of my eyes as well. Uh, so what is it that you Gartok. wanted us to do again? <laughs> <laughs> Save my children. All right, we're so, okay. So what do you want us to do? You want us to just drop you off here and yeah, uh, just leave me in the car? And you find them, and you bring <laughs> both of them, and you bring them back. Oh, all right, I'm, I'm just gonna hang on to this. <laughs> I take the bracelet. I was like, yeah, hey, I'm just gonna hang on to this. <laughs> do you put it on? Do you put I it on? No. I, that's a big risk. No, of after you're seeing after all that, no way. Maybe if you put it on, I'll bring his kid back to life. That seems like That's a pretty weird ass fucking thing to say. I know Henry. it seems pretty weird that a bracelet will kill his kid. But there's like an internal magical logic to it. Do you know what I mean? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm a stepfather. It is my job to take other people's children and then have them be a burden on me. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna put on the bracelet. Oh, <gasps> okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> so you put on the bracelet. Yeah. And he says, kill yourself. <laughs> and as he does, you feel like more than anything you've ever wanted in your entire life is to kill yourself. I, I, oh, my God. So what do you... Wait, like, the dragon says kill yourself? Yeah. He says oh. it to you, and you have to try to do it. Hey, what, what weapons do you have on you? I have my very sharp business cards. Okay, so you just pull one out. You see, you watch yourself pull Do one out. Do you hear him say that? Yeah, you hear him say it. And you start to drag it across your neck. I, I jump at Ron. I try to pin Ron down. Okay. Uh, do a uh, uh, dexterity check. It's a nat 20. Wow. Ooh. Plus Ooh. one, so 21. Okay, so you, you don't just tackle him. You tackle him so well that the bracelet comes off. Yeah. So oof, you feel like, okay, you're free of whatever the fuck that was. What, what the hell, Gartok? What the, what the hell? Fuck? You killed my kid! Ah! And he, like, uh, the other bracelet, the first one that started burning, burns really hard again, and he starts screaming. Are you okay, Ron? Yes, thank you, Daryl. Whoa. Gartok, that's not cool. I'm aware, but he just killed my kid. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> that was an accident, though. We didn't know. You saw, I was doing face things. You know, Gartok, you, know, you gotta... To do, just do things you don't know what the consequences will be? Listen, Gartok, man, it's hard to read dragon faces. Now, I'm not saying that from like a species superiority standpoint, but that there is a chasm of sort of understanding between your kind and what appears to be our point is, sorry about that. Are you going to be cool? I want you to stay cool, because if you don't, we'll take those other two bracelets right whoa, off of you. Whoa, 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 so stay cool. So that is intimidation for show. So roll that. It's not persuasion. Ooh. No, if All you're right. threatening to kill his other two kids, that's intimidation. Luckily for you. 12 plus 3, 15. So his, he continues to shake with what seems to be a mixture of grief and anger, but he tries to like make himself smaller and make himself less fucking furious at you. Gartok, we're a team, and you join this team, and sometimes your teammates make mistakes, but you don't fight your own team. How would you feel if I went into your weird horse made of metal and took out one of the snakes and then made the snake bite your son? How would that feel? Well, I'd be pretty... Peed off, and I know that you're peed off, but right now we got to work together. We're going to, you know what? I'm pissed at you. We're, we're going to save your kids, but just because your kids are probably hopefully innocent. I what? don't know why I'm the one, <laughs> why I'm the dick in this scenario. Okay, okay gentlemen, 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 I maybe, think. Maybe we just need to get Ron to I, apologize. I think we all need to cool off. Actually, I want to say thank you, Gartok, <laughs> because I didn't know that I wanted to live <laughs> until I wanted to die. <laughs> and now I have no fear of death whatsoever. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, here's what I'm suggesting. We let Gartok cool off a little bit. 
and pr- process the death of his son or daughter. I don't know what the gender was of the son. One. <laughs> <laughs> I think only son. <laughs> yeah, I Gar talk. I think we are all a bit in shock by what we did by accident. So please don't take any of our insensitivity to heart because we're all in our own way traumatized by what just happened. Obviously, not as much as the trauma is what you're feeling. I'm sure but it's like a shared mutual. But trauma. I think yeah. I think at any rate, okay. Let's I don't I don't see it as a trauma, but a freedom. I hope you'll agree. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're gonna let you cool off. Let's go. All right, let's go. So we all are we getting By the out way, of the minivan? Which way to the rocks, right? Okay, yeah, you're going to the gate. Okay, really quick. This is important Holy to me. Shit. As we all get out of the Holy minivan, I, I stay behind for a second. I grab my box of Charleston shoes <laughs> and I look at a car dog and say, "Sorry, buddy." And I give him a few, and then I say, "Hey." uh Hey, Henry, you mind staying? Well, well, when you give Gartok the Charleston shoes, he takes them and he just crushes them in his hand and like the caramel just sort of spreads between them. And he goes, these don't taste good. I put my glasses back on <laughs> and I get out and I say, uh, hey, uh, hey, Henry, can I just talk to you really quick? Just yeah, yeah, mano yeah, yeah, mano yeah, yeah. in the back of the van. Uh, yeah, what's up? What's up? Hey, so I noticed that you saw my little dirty secret. This box of Charleston the, the, shoes. Oh, I thought you meant the fact that we just killed someone's son. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, that's pretty tough too. But uh, so, but you're more worried about the fact that I saw your candy bars than the the murder we look, just man, did. Look, man, I've really been. I told Carol I was going to lose weight and uh, <laughs> not supposed to be having these. And, and you in saw, the distance, you just go. <laughs> and uh, you saw me. D- but here's the thing: I these were my dad's favorite candy. Um, that's complex. And. Uh, <laughs> I want you to take them because uh, I don't want to disappoint Carol, but I don't want you to throw them away. Just will you just give me one whenever I don't know whenever yeah. whenever you whenever I do something you think my dad would be proud of. Maybe you could Jesus give me one of these Charleston Christ. shoes. You know what? I think your dad would be very proud of you right now. So here's a Charleston shoe. God. I, <laughs> you killed my son. <laughs> Shit! Yeah, we did. We gotta go. I'm still in shock about the son death. We need to keep moving. As on. he leaves, I definitely stay behind and I eat that Charleston shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Tears in my eyes. <laughs> are, right. are you looking at the van or are you looking away from the van? I'm looking away from the okay. van. <laughs> All right. Because if else. you turn around, you'd see he's just staring <laughs> daggers at you, <laughs> watching you eat candy after you've killed his kid. All right. I walk back to everybody enjoying my Charles and Chew. Okay. So um, in the uh, uh, cave, you see there is a, basically a, a big old door and a torch on either side of it. Uh, and if you look closer at the door, you can see that almost like a doggy door, like on the bottom of the, of the, there's no other way to say door, of the door, um, there's a smaller door inlaid within it with its own uh, doorknob. Hmm. So it's like and a door within the door scenario. Yes, there's a, there's a big doorknob that's a, around, you know, your hand height, and then there's a, a smaller one around uh, ankle height. <laughs> Can we, do you think there's a trap on this door? Should we do like a little look at it? I'm going to roll investigation on the door. That's, uh, oh my God, I'm burning these dumb natty 20s right now. That's wow. a natty 20, 21. Jesus. Okay, well, you just straight up see that there is uh, some sort of mechanism connected to the um, the door that is at human height that is not connected to the door that is at knee height. In fact, it doesn't even seem to be connected to any hinges, the, like the big door. Like with your 20, you can see like the fucking big door is a trap. Oh, let's take that little door. Are you sure you want to open any parts of this? Should we maybe check? I'm just, like- I have a good feeling about this door. I looked at it really hard <laughs> and I seem to get like a real amount of knowledge from it just from them looking like a lot of knowledge, like way more knowledge than I get on average when I look at doors. <laughs> like I have a far greater feeling about this door than any other door, arguably probably in my entire life. Oh, well, call him Jim Morrison because. You- oh, my God. Ah! That's not a dad joke. No, 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 that's not a dad joke. That's not a dad joke. Let's just call him Jim Morrison. Yeah, because he knows the door. All right, now. (laughs) One damage. Three. I've only taken damage from dad jokes. (laughs) So another one damage for Henry Oak. So now, Beth, you also get a uh, an inspiration for telling a dad joke. So whenever you want, you can spend that inspiration. It will give you advantage on any die roll. Wow, that's great. (laughs) All right, uh, I'm gonna try to open the small door. So you do, and it swings open. With no problem, uh, uh, revealing just to you, I guess, um, another antechamber that is completely bare except for, again, a torch and a very slightly raised platform in the middle of the room that stands in front of another door. 
Sounds like another trap situation over here. Sounds like maybe there's a sequence of traps leading to, you know, maybe hopefully these kids. That's fatherhood, though. It's a bunch of traps. And... <laughs> With an indeterminate end. Yes. Uh, so my guess is either this raised plate, if we step on it, it'll open the door or it'll kill us. One second, everybody. I go ahead and I pull out my um, emergency kit, which I brought in the minivan, and I pull one of those shake um flashlights out and i start shaking it up i said let's take a look at what's around here do investigation with an advantage five <laughs> and uh 14 okay so you can basically see that apart from the torches the door and the um pressure plate there's seemingly nothing else at least immediately obvious in the room like you can't see any holes for like poison darts to come out of or any stuff like that there could be something else there's clearly something else going on because all you can see is like the plate you don't know what's connected to why don't we just throw something on the plate? Yeah, we should Ooh, do that. Like that. Yeah. yeah, maybe we, uh, maybe we all uh, step outside of the room. I'm a little afraid that if we hit this pressure plate, it's gonna kill us. So maybe we just throw something from outside the small door onto the pressure plate. Uh, yeah, let's do that. What do we have that's heavy? I find like a football size rock. All right, it's probably like uh, so what? Probably like twenty pounds. I go. Daryl Wilson. <laughs> throw it. <laughs> like, hey, you go, I need someone to hike this to me. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, can't, I can't throw it unless someone hikes it to me. <laughs> okay. Um, so it lands on the pressure plate. I could make you roll, but that's boring. Um, so it lands on the pressure plate, and you hear one click mm. as the pressure plate goes down a little bit. All right, everybody, find me some more football-sized rocks, and we'll just keep doing this thing. <laughs> okay, we go, I go rock scrounging. Okay, if you just keep adding... Every, like, time, every time they ha- toss me when I go, hike, and I throw it <laughs> okay. onto the pressure plate. Are you calling plays like every yeah, single time? Yeah, <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, once you get three rocks on there, three clicks, mm-hmm. the door just opens. Well, good job, guys. We disarmed the trap. We disarmed it with football. Opens. Go doodlers. I put my hands in. I put doodlers. My hands. doodlers. Doodlers. Doodler. Woo! So go as, you, the door. As, as you walk past the pressure plate... Um, I step on it. You can really <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, you can feel some heat rising from it. Ooh, um, it's a hot plate. Yeah, yeah. So careful. <laughs> basically, I started you out with some baby ass puzzles, but yeah, if you like put your full adult weight onto it, it would have just like gone into the lava. Basically, Wait, guys, like floating on lava. Whoa. I think there's a there's a theme here. I think these are all traps that would keep adults out. Uh, right, it's like the way the door. I think there might be a theme here, guys. This might be like a kid hideout. Wow. Maybe. That was pretty good. I think it's because Anthony said the word adult weight. <laughs> <laughs> I, All right. Well, good to know. I'm, I, I, why show when you can tell? <laughs> you guys think it's creepy that uh, us four full-grown large men are going into a, just a kids-only place? No, just no. me. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Let's, Don't worry about Ron. Let's uh, keep going. I put my arm around Ron. Start walking. Okay. So um, the door opens to a darkened hallway with you, but at the end of the hallway, you can see a light sort of flickering from another room. And you can hear from that room two female voices, two young female voices, <laughs> one of whom oh, is just. Man, I love female voices. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, one, of, no. One, one of whom is just sobbing. Oh, no. Oh, and the other of whom is like. You have to focus up. He's gonna. He's coming for us. Apparently, he doesn't care about the the restriction, and I guess he's coming for us. So you have to <laughs> get your head in the game. I I'm sad too, but we can't we can't focus on that right now. Okay. So do we see? We're, we, we hear, hear, that. hear that. We hear that. All right. I want to call Dad Huddle real quick, guys. Yeah, Dad Huddle. Hey. Um. Just to be clear, let's get our story straight. <laughs> like <laughs> now. That's a good idea. Before we go in there about why their brother is dead. I'll be honest, me, Henry Oak, I cannot, I'm bad at lying, especially when I have a guilty conscience. So I think we should just give it to him straight between the eyes. We killed their brother. I think we shouldn't let them know until we're in a safe place. Agreed. I think until then, we should gaslight them and tell them that their brother is not dead. (laughs) Oh, they know the brother's dead, I'm sure. Hey, hey, honey, honey. (laughs) Ron, it sure sounds like they're crying. Yeah. And why do women cry? Because they don't know that their brother is probably <laughs> still alive. All right, I, I hear you, Ron. Really quick, uh, can, can you think maybe we could put that bracelet in a safe spot where they don't see it? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna put it in my boot. Okay. Okay. Um, I I'm just gonna. I think I'm gonna have to go ahead and make some sort of saving throw for like every minute we're in here to not break down and confess that I killed their kid. That sounds their great. Brother. Okay. That sounds great. That makes sense. Um, I don't know what that saving throw would be. It'll be wisdom. 
Oh, okay. I've got you're a lot. Fighting your own I got a lot of wisdom. Yeah, it so is, it is wise to keep your mouth shut now. So if you if you fail that, then you're just gonna open your mouth. I, okay. I try to I try to uh, kind of invigorate uh, Henry. I go, Henry, Henry, you want to save these kids, right? That's the least we could do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now I know you. Di- I know you can't lie, son. I know that. But the thing you want to do is save these two dragons, right? Yes, that's you don't want to upset them. That's also true. So we got, I, I know it's tough, but you got to do it. You got to do the right thing. You got to not lie. I mean, you got to lie and you got to just not, you just got to do this to help save their lives. Okay. And then you'll let them know. And I know you're going to be there for them. You're going to help them through this. We'll, we'll take as much time as we need to help these dragons grieve. Oh God, we, killed we, their, really, we killed their brother. I know, though. I know. But here's the thing. If you do the wrong thing, you're going to be responsible for their deaths too. Why, where, are we going to kill them? No, but we're going to have to get out of this dangerous place. Who knows what's going to happen? Okay, I'm just not going to say anything. And okay. they should, they better not, if they ask me any question, I can't be held responsible for what comes out of my mouth. So I'm just going to try to be quiet. I, I go over to Glenn and I go, don't worry, I took care of Henry. He'll be all right. <laughs> oh, okay. I look, I look at Henry and I'm back, remember. And so Ron does not hear, Ron killed their kids. <laughs> <laughs> not you. You're good, dog. <laughs> Listen, this is a little thing we do when we were on tour. It's called what happens in your by your, your bandmates, whatever they do, that's on them. You know, if Chico gets picked up with an eight ball of coke, you had nothing to do with it. That was his problem. That's the way you gotta think now. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Ron's over by himself and be like, we're all in this together. <laughs> Um, but but I do want to get our story straight before we go in there. Let's just say we're travelers and we heard some children crying. People okay, I'm with, in, I'm with Yeah, yes, we heard yes. people in need and we came to check yes, it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. So how do you reveal yourselves or do you reveal yourselves? Because they we don't... We walk very slowly and I keep doing... Okay, as you walk slow, you can also see that the door that you were just came through mm-hmm. was connected to sort of a pulley system that had some like little shards of metal on it. Mm-hmm. Presumably some sort of rudimentary alarm. They don't know you're here. All hey, right. kids... Hello? Hey, is, uh, anybody need help over there? We heard some crying, and we're, we're just wondering if everything's okay. We're not armed or anything. We're just uh, just passing by, and w- what sounded like someone w- was in trouble here. It's a pretty scary place. There's traps and stuff. We hope you're okay. So you hear, um, get the crossbow. <laughs> get the crossbow. Hey, we, uh, we heard you say, get the crossbow, and I- I'm really trying to, we're, we're being honest here, we're just... We're just four friendly travelers that are, are, are heard some kids crying. We want to make four sure you're... friendly travelers who got past our alarm. Yeah, I mean we're pretty smart. We're smart travelers. We're the whole package. <laughs> you just broke into our home. We clearly didn't want other people. We he heard sent crying. You. He sent you. Gartok sent you. Gartok sent you. <laughs> who? Is... All right, I, I, do uh... a, I do a saving throw yeah. for my. Oh shit! I got a natural twenty. All right, <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> so that's that works for your next saving. Th- you be you get advantage on your next saving. Th- who's who's Gartok? Uh, roll deception. Hey, who who's a Gartok? We don't know any Gartok. <laughs> I got <a> four. <laughs> <laughs> that's the sound of four deception coming out of Matt. He hired you to come find us. Leave, oh. leave, or we'll kill you. It's that simple. Leave, oh, or we'll kill you. Gartok. What did he pay you? What did he pay you? We can we can do better. You know. Kind of a little jacked up. He didn't pay us anything. Yeah. We're, we're, just, we're dads, too. You wouldn't have gotten here without knowing some information about us. You wouldn't have been able to get information about us unless it was from Gartok. And the fact that my fucking brother is dead in this corner means that apparently he doesn't care about the, the bindings we put on him. I know you're here to kill us. If you want to come in and get us, then bring it the fuck on. Do you not like your dad? Yeah! No, is that what you're getting from this? Yeah. Because he kind of sucks, too, man. Who killed him? Who killed our brother? Okay, that's a five. Plus right, but I get an advantage, right? Yeah, yeah, roll again. So it's five plus five is ten. And another oh natural my God, twenty. What is with your dice? Uh, this is insane. All right, I, I'm biting my tongue. And, oh, I say Gartok took off the bracelet himself. He killed them. Uh, I knew it. I, fu- I fucking knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And the crying voice is like, we shouldn't have ever. We shouldn't have done hey, it. Hey, <laughs> hey, kids, kids. Look, you, you caught us in a lie, I gotta admit. But we're, we're in over our heads. We're just four dads who lost our kids, and Gartok helped us out. He helped us out because he said he would tell us how to get to Neverwinter. Yeah, a bunch of guys were kicking the shit out of him, and he was and, looking for you. And we were asking about the kids, but he couldn't even tell us. Of course he can t- tell you. We fucking made sure of that. But you, uh. he, the guy said, I'll take you to Neverwinter, and in exchange for that, you thought, I'll help him take two kids who didn't want to be with him. Wait, wait, you just You could have bought a map. You uh, could have asked anybody. Hey, uh, yeah, we're hey, kind of new here. 
hey kid, as you just said, you you put something on that means he couldn't tell us stuff. We don't know the whole story. We just we just thought he was a guy looking for his kids like we were. He's a dragon. You're supposed to do the thing that backwater assholes do in this area. You're supposed to try to kill him. Um, uh, some people were trying to kill him, and we we actually saved him. Yeah. Because we're good people. Yeah, Are we're, you? We're helpers. Look, you you have all the power here, all right? And if you don't want our help, we'll we'll go ahead and we'll walk away. But if you need help, we're here for you. You'll you will help us. Uh, we'll help you. The way that you can help us, if you actually do want to, now that you have abetted in the murder of our brother, is you can kill Gartok. Guys, dad huddle, dad huddle, dad, dad huddle. huddle. Okay. <laughs> All right, Gartok seems like bad news. I'm just gonna. I, I don't not yeah. not to judge another dad, but I. It seems like these kids got one up on. Do we find out why they're mad at him? Oh, let me. Let me All right, uh, Ron, you give it a shot because they didn't answer. I'm actually gonna try persuasion on this, and I'm gonna say I thought that nobody could help me before I went on this soccer field trip. You don't know what a soccer field trip is, but I thought I was a lone wolf and uh, a lone dragon and. Uh, <laughs> I thought I was all alone, but I'm not. And you're not either because you, you have your, your one remaining sibling <laughs> and then also us. And we are here to help. So Ask them what happened with their dad. Did Gartok do something to you to trap you here? All right, go ahead and roll. 11 plus you use, one. You could use 11 it. plus one is fine. Okay. I mean, okay. that'll do it. How much did Gartok tell you about what he does for a living? He said that he was... Um, something about slave labor, I believe. Yeah. Labor, yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Is yeah. the is the thing that we say it's a it's a dragon saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 dragon tongue for absolutely. Yeah, the wisest dragon who ever lived was named Ding, so we say his name three times. <laughs> ah. Wow. So uh are you are you so his, much culture here? Are you his slaves or his children? We were until we decided to leave. we we are his children, but we're also his slaves. He doesn't think of us as slaves. He thinks he's just being a good father by forcing us to do the things that he wants us to do. He's he says, he always says the goal of a father is to make their child the best version of themselves they can be. And because he's so experienced, he thinks he can make us do that with those fucking bracelets. What did he want you to do? He wanted us to coincidentally do a lot of things that benefited him, do a lot of hard labor when we didn't feel like it, be cruel to people to make our hearts harder, hurt his enemies, be flirty with, with cute ladies at the bar so that he could bring them home. It was bad. I was, uh, I was in a similar situation with my father who wanted me to be a good fisherman and I, I wasn't. And you know what I wanted more than anything was for him to be proud of me, but he wasn't and maybe your father might not ever be proud of you, but that doesn't mean that you're not good dragons. We know we're good. <laughs> <laughs> he enslaved us. We were never really worried about whether he liked us or not. Oh. Sounds like you've got some stuff. Yeah, yeah, I've got some stuff. I've got some stuff. Um, Wait, so can I ask then, what was your plan here in terms of keeping them away from you guys? The plan was we we found by pure happenstance, a creature in a purple cloak allowed us to draw from a deck of many things. Purple cloak. And we were capable of changing one fact from our past. And we took that moment to change it so that when our father put the bracelets on us, we changed it so instead he put them on himself. So we couldn't change the inscriptions on the bracelets, but we could at least change who they went on. Oh, so it was like a... Oh. And he, because he's an asshole, one bracelet was attached to Dracon, and that was if any of these bracelets leave, uh, then then I die. He was he was using uh, our love of each other to keep us in line. So don't can't you control your dad right now? No, he's the one who etched the the, oh. the thing. So he's the only one who has any. He's he's the the arbiter of the, the etchings. You kids are in a tough spot. I think we should kill their dad. I'm gonna put that out there. I've I've crossed the line. I think I'm ready to kill this guy. How, okay, what's okay? Tell us about your dad. Does he have any like big glowing weak spots that if the, he exposes them once like every enemy two crab, minutes in a, loo in a looping have any pattern? Allergies. <laughs> Can I just ask him two more questions before we just kill? If you, look, we're a team, and if you three want to kill the dragon, we'll kill a dragon. Okay, yeah. what's what okay. did you want to ask? What do you want? Hey, ask? kids, can I ask two questions? Yeah. Uh, first, um, for your species, dragons, is what your dad doing? Pretty normal. Like, is it pretty cool? <laughs> <laughs> like, is this like an app? It's like, it's, I just want to make sure we're not stepping on some cult. Like, you know, uh, you, you Cultural should know, Henry. Like, I just want to know if, like, is it's, 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 it's a pretty normal dad, dragon wise. Yeah, he is. Mm. But if your version of morality is that if enough people do it, it's fine. So, then, so maybe, you, then maybe we should be rethinking about who's now, neutral evil so, in this and situation. My second, wait, wait. And my second question is what is it that you want to do when you grow up? We want to. Jesus. Sorry. 
Who's Jesus? Yeah, sorry. You guys have Jesus in this world? Jesus is also the name of another dragon. <laughs> oh, okay. Who was constantly stymied by really good questions. Oh, man. So when we can't think of what to say immediately, we invoke his name. His name was spelled C H Y Y Z. Oh my U apostrophe S. U apostrophe S. I'm just wondering, like, you know, when if you had kids of your own, how would you treat them? What would you want to do? So uh, I, I'd never thought. Had, had had you ever thought about that, Reese? And she <laughs> was just not, just not this. Just would not do what he did to us. I feel like I would make the the, the restrictions on the collars a lot vaguer, <laughs> so you could do more things. And I would not have them do as much like manual, like physical labor. But you probably like still want to own slaves and. I mean, what else are we supposed to do? Okay. All right. So you, dad huddle, dad huddle. So what you're getting at is he was just trying to make them do their chores and then they, they rebelled against him is kind of what you're suggesting here. Look, uh, um, I have no problem killing this dragon. I'm not, I'm not pro slavery. So we could kill this dragon. I'm, I'm more looking at Henry here. I'm just wondering, um, I mean, if we kill Gartok, it feels like the kids are going to go do the same thing. So like, God, Maybe like we just kill the father. Yeah, we sh- we should have asked if it's uh, if uh, if he was a good dragon dad wise instead of a good dad dragon wise. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my real question, <laughs> I guess my real question is, it feels like we should either save all three of them or well, kill for that, or oh, kill mean- all three of them because they seem pretty equal in terms of what they might end up doing what if because i i you know this you know one of my favorite shows is star trek Uh, (laughs) i don't know if you guys like star trek but they always talk about the prime directive on star trek and not interfering with civilizations that are like pre-warp i mean like you know if warp is the minivan for us maybe we shouldn't what if we do this what if we hey do you kids think you could take your dad in a fight no that's why we ran okay well what what would we need to make it a fair fight between you and your dad? Oh my God. You want to pit us but, against each other? No, but here's what I'm saying is like, look, you know, we don't know, but we could pit them against each other on like a level playing yeah, field. Dad, and dad like hole, them sort of out. I so, we're letting them, so you're letting street justice. Yeah. Street, out. Here's what, what I'm, I, I'm thinking. Is there a way we can use those bracelets? Yeah. Maybe if we can yeah. change the runes to say, be a good dad. Oh, and forget was, about your brother. <laughs> if we can change the runes, maybe we can make them say, be a good family for each of them Whoa. and put them together. And maybe we can make them not enslave people anymore and become a happy family. That's they're, they're just like me and Carol and my son were once. <laughs> and Darnell. And Darnell. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you had another son, Darnell. I picked up the name Darnell somewhere. I can't remember I, I, what. I put my hand out to Henry mm-hmm. requesting a Charles and Jew. I know. I don't think your dad's proud of you right now. But wait, this is not a bad idea. I like this idea. Hey, I asked the kids, what happens if we take the other two bracelets off your dad? Do you both die? No, the sacrificial lamb was, was our brother. <laughs> well, but what happens with the other two? Well, you would be releasing him from the the constraints of the other two bracelets, which were he couldn't tell anybody about our situation and that he couldn't physically raise a hand against so he'd probably himself. Come and, so he'd probably come and find you guys, though, and kill you or something, right? He would come and get us, yeah. yeah. Could you, like, change those bracelets to do something else? We couldn't, but he could because he's the one who crafted them. Is mm. there something... Uh... We could tell him to maybe convince him to change the bracelet. If, if say, we were in an awkward situation of killing one of his children. <laughs> Sorry, what? All right, I got to do a saving throw. Where's my dad? <laughs> Don't they already know? Oh, no. They no, you, you natty 20, so they thought yeah, it was just their dad. I did 12 crits it, it in a row. It was. It was just. All right, uh, I'm fine. I got a 17. Hey, kids, we're going to be right back. We're going to go talk to... Uh, we're going to go kill your dad. Okay? Like you Sounds want. great. So we'll be back. Sounds great. We'll All right. We'll be here. Guys, let's go. Don't let's... come back in without throwing his severed head through the hallway toward us. Cool. So, guys, here's the idea. You know, kind of like when um, in those movies where, like, you know, uh, uh, a kid is, like, trying to get, like, his old dad to, like, sign a contract and he, like, switches it. Maybe yeah, yeah, we yeah, can yeah. kind of, like, convince Gartok to, like, teach us dragon language for a second and rewrite the bracelets. Uh... Sounds a little complicated. And I'm hoping our DM will kind of let it happen. Yeah. <laughs> so, let's check it. Let's do it. Okay. Let's, let's, let's get over there. Let's go back to Gartog. Okay. We go All back right. to Gartog. He's still crying. <laughs> we open the door. Hey, Gartok. We're less sad that we made you sad by killing your kid, but we're sad that we killed their brother. 
What does that mean? <laughs> we're just not sad for you, but we're still sad about the action because we've heard Great. some shit. Because your, your opinion kids. of me is real important to me right now. Where I, are my kids? Did you get them or not? Hey, Gartok, we uh, we found your kids, and it seems like you guys are all having a little bit of a, a little bit of a family a family fight. spat. They're a little mad at you. I'm aware of that. Okay, well that's good to know. We're all on the same two, page. Two thirds of them are pretty mad at you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. He takes a, some damage. <laughs> Gartok, what 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 do you most want with your kids back? What is it? Why why do you want your kids back? Because they were a great asset to my business. <laughs> and he takes some more damage. One of the the brace brace on his right wrist flares up. Oh, that, okay, that's the one that's stopping him from talking. Well, we let's take that one off. All right. We take it off. Ah, why couldn't you have started with that one and not the one on my leg? I don't know. Oh, it you had a one, cool. in, you had a one cool. in three chance and you chose the wrong one. I prefer anklets to bracelets. What do you want to know? Weirder on thing. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to know? Dad, <laughs> I don't know. The moral implications of this whole thing are, are blowing my brain right now. Pretty so spicy. If we, it's pretty so spicy, if, we gave, if we gave the kids like bracelets that said, be good kid or are we just putting them in slavery again that's true it is another that's why i'm saying we should just cut one of his legs off and then let him fight the uh, fight against them <laughs> they're dragons they're pretty hardcore i think we should make it even up the fight and then be like look we don't know what's going on or we could just walk away right now yeah can we just like leave maybe maybe the dad lesson that this journey is teaching us is that you should butt out of other people's parenting <laughs> styles because you don't know who you're gonna hurt and you don't want to mess up and get involved in a family thing and cause more trouble than good. If they want, I'm not doing their dirty work. They, if they want to kill their dad, they can kill their dad. He can't hurt them, right? That's fair. That does seem fair. And okay. but now he can talk about it. Okay. And talking can hurt people too. Oh, oh, I know what we're gonna do. I know what we're gonna do because we're gonna kiss you. Know, here's okay. All right. I've learned the lesson. I've solved the riddle. <laughs> the moral puzzle. <laughs> He's a shitty dad. Yes. Right. But and the whole species is a little questionable. The whole species is a little questionable, but yeah. here's what we do. We tie him up, right? We bring the kids out. We give one of them the knife, and we say, you can kill him, but then you'll be just as bad as he is. <laughs> and then we give them the... It's like just like I say with my boys, Sparrow and Lark, you know? <laughs> I try to give them choices, right? You know, to, and the, to, you know, and let them think, right? So to me, then what that is is like they're like, okay, they know the dad's never getting out, but then for them, they get the chance to separate, but not you know get down to his level, you know, and that can bring them closure. They can walk away, and then he still can't hurt. Them. Maybe I'm just maybe I'm just a sap, but let's try to give our our pal Gartok, who helped us out. The best chance possible. You keep so, saying he helped you out. He never helped. Help I want to review you just for a second. Twice. Hey DM. He hey nothing. DM. Daryl Wilson is talking. and he, I do a point he, of order from Henry Oak. Uh, he hasn't done anything for us. We saved him from a mob of street justice, no, but, but, and then we brought him to his kids. But, Will, don't forget that uh, that Daryl Wilson disproportionately likes people who like his beer. I, just, <laughs> I will say this, Daryl. I just want to say this, Henry. When we picked up your kids, they were punching a tree and punching you. And, Glenn, your kid was... I don't even want to say what he was doing, but you know, <laughs> you know, the, smoking the you dude. know what he was doing. And Ron, the you can't even talk to you. None of us are perfect dads. And I'm not, I'm not saying we were as bad as a slave owner or anything. I'm just saying that he's a dad like us and he's just trying to make do. So this is what I'm suggesting. Daryl. I suggest that we do what you say, mm -hmm. but let's use the other two bracelets and do a little dad brainstorm and come up with two things that we think are the most important value for a dad. And we put those bracelets on him and we give him the best shot possible <laughs> to convince his kids not to kill him. We still let them make the ultimate choice, but maybe we come up with two values that we think is important <laughs> as dads and put those bracelets on him and then we see what happens. Okay. 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 So we keep the one that says he can't hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. and, and then, we, but the other one says like, like be a good dad. <laughs> but that's, that's too vague. Like, like, Respect your kids' dreams or something. That's why we gotta do it. We gotta do a brainstorm. Come with two values that okay, we think are okay. good. Okay, okay, all right. What What do you guys? Well, I don't know. So I, you know, for me, you know, honesty is important with my kids, but also respect your kids. All right, I'm Res pulling out. I'm pulling out a piece of paper uh, from my my pack. I'm like, good, good, good. Keep brainstorming. Honesty. So respect your kids. Don't hurt them. Take good care of them. Love your children. Love your children, but not physically. <laughs> okay. Oh God. <laughs> Ron, but show Ron. them physical affection, but not whatever is inappropriate physical affection for dragons. 
Good. Ron, what, Ron, probably what's, not going to fit in one bracelet, but that's Ron, a good one. What, what do you try to do for Terry? What's what's the most important thing for you as a dad? Uh, just try not to make Terry feel the way I felt when I was Terry's age. I like that. I'm trying to think of how we say that. It seems like that could blow sideways <laughs> on us pretty That's quick. true. Glenn, Glenn, how about you? Uh, you know, I think it's important to let your kids make their own decisions. Ah. You know what I mean? Like, because that's really the best teacher is school of hard knocks. So that's where kind of I kind of let him kind of do his thing, and he'll come around eventually. Okay. How about let your kids make their own decisions within a certain boundary? I don't know, okay, I don't know about what Until they're are. dragon adults. Until they're adults, okay. I think that's a pretty good one, until they're adults. So that's number one. How about number two? Honesty, respect well, your I, kids. I feel like love. I think there should love. be something about love, right? Yeah. Like, you know. Unconditional love, Unconditional man. love that, like, for that, your like, kids. Woodstock, free love, we're, unconditional But love. we're, like, literally giving them conditions on these bracelets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, treat. Let's go back to the good book, Treat Your Kids. Like you would want to be treated. That could go sideways too, though. Yeah. But that's, but you know. But you I, can't hurt them physically. Yeah, right? and I can't judge them. And again, the kids might kill them anyways. I'm just trying to, I feel. I golden rule's a good rule, right, everybody? Golden rule's a good rule. Yeah, treat sure. others yeah, as yeah. you would like them to treat you. So we got treat your kids like you'd want to be treated and let your kids make their own decisions within a certain boundary <laughs> until they're dragging adult age. I feel like we need more practical values here. <laughs> like, there are some things that you should not buy store brand for. <laughs> Toilet paper. Um, is it mac and cheese. That's true, actually. Yeah. Okay. You can probably add that to one of those. Right? Hey, hey, uh, are we good with those two? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, let's yeah, yeah, yeah. we're good with those two. <laughs> hey, Gartok. Yeah. How do you say <laughs> can, can you do me a favor? Could you uh could you write down these two sentences um in dragon on these bracelets? Why? Because look, we're gonna give you your kids back, but uh, this um, was a condition. This is this was, this was this a, condition. Was a condition for 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 them seeing again. We're just trying to be middlemen. We're trying to be negotiators. We're trying to just ease this process. Help your family through this spat. And I pull and, out the axe and I say, and the other option is we kill you. All right, you roll persuasion. You roll intimidation. <laughs> both of you with advantage. Ugh, persuasion gets me thirteen. Fourteen. All right, fine. You. I don't care anymore. I just want this to be over. Here you I, go. Here's the two bracelets. I just want this feeling <laughs> to stop. Okay. So if you do kill me, fine. I don't even give a shit anymore. I had to watch you slowly kill one of my kids who now probably... Wasn't that slow? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he flicks open a, a talon and then sort of scritches out what was there on the, bra on the bracelets. very okay. dense. <laughs> yeah. The translation's very, very complicated and dense. Uh, <laughs> etches the shit on there and goes, cool, so you're going to give that, you're going to give these to them? No, we're putting we're them, putting on, them you. on you, bitch. And whoa, then we whoa, put whoa. them on him. <laughs> we put them on him. <laughs> <laughs> how, how you feel, Gartok? What's mac and cheese? Here, go ahead and get in the back of this, and we start backing the van up towards the <laughs> entrance with the trunk open. Okay. He's just very shaken. He's just like, what have I done? <laughs> what do I do? All right, buddy. This is going to be, look, uh, you know, when you make a mistake, it's always tough as a dad to admit to your kids you made a mistake, but we're going we're gonna to have you meet your kids, and, um, well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> So we pull up to the, I feel like we pull up to the cave and Matt, Matt I feel like you're honking. Like, hey, kids, come meet your dad. <laughs> I yeah, take, we, should, we don't have to bring him in. They can come out and meet him, right? Yeah, I, I pick up Gartok and I. And I <laughs> 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 what is this? I feeling? gave him a little pet. He just reminds me of my dog and I put him down in front of the door and I go, hey, uh, hey, kids, your, your dad's here and um, he's not going to hurt you and he wants to talk to you. Whatever, whatever you want to do, it's 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 up to you. It's not, you know, we're not your family. It's, it's a family matter. And I stand back and I watch to see what Anthony does. Okay, there's nothing I love more in role playing than when I have to do a conversation where I'm both people, <laughs> all three people, Anthony. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. So you see Reese and uh, Sylvan. Sylvan coming out. Sylvan has a dagger, and uh, uh, the other one has a crossbow. And they come out and they see their dad. Gartok just sort of sitting there and immediately uh, Sylvan is like, you killed our fucking brother and runs at him with a dagger. I can't, I, 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 uh, I get in the way to block Sylvan. So she stops for a second and goes, what are you doing? What is this? So let, hear me out. 
<laughs> uh, we, oh, God. we, Sylvan, you have a lot of reason to be upset with your father, but you should know we turned those bracelets around, and now not only can he not hurt you, but the bracelets say that he has to treat you the way he would want to be treated. And also, he has to let you make your own decisions uh, until and also, within guidance and, you know, and, and until you're dragon adults. And, and also, and also uh, yeah. try to avoid store brands, <laughs> toilet paper, and mac and cheese. So, knowing all that, we just, we wanted to maybe, you know, we feel like we really goofed this one up. We feel like we kind of came in here with our values and we kind of maybe didn't really understand what was going on dragon style. But we wanted to give like a fresh slate, maybe a chance for this relationship to grow again and new. Now, I'm going to step out of your way. And if you want to kill him, there's nothing that can stop you because he can't hurt you anymore. But I'm hoping you'll be the bigger person, the bigger dragon. And you won't succumb to your old dad's level, and you'll maybe hear the new your dad out. Now, hold on, hold on. I feel like you're definitely having to roll your the roll from lying again. You're oh still lying shit! Here, yeah, right? let me let me rip through like three of these uh, <laughs> saving throws. Wait, why is he lying though? He's telling the truth because he's 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 by omission, not mentioning that that we killed him. Oh, okay. okay uh, I rolled a three <laughs> plus five is an eight, and also we killed your brother. <laughs> She immediately tries no, to take no, no, a swipe no, 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 at wait. you. If you attack me, you're just as bad as him. <laughs> no, because I didn't kill my brother. Well, let me put it this way. We won't be mad. We'll be disappointed. <laughs> We're going to get out of the way and let your dad take it away. Okay, take it away, dad. So what are you going to do to make her stop trying to stab you? Because you just said you killed their brother. I say, dad, help. <laughs> Daryl steps in between Henry and the dragon. <laughs> so it's all like a fucking line four people deep of people standing in front of each other. Look, this was all an accident. If you want to fight us, you'll fight us. But first, let's just let Garchomp. Which one, Ron did it? <laughs> Which one's Ron? That one, that one, that one. No, I'm Ron. Oh, huh? what? And I did it, and I didn't know I did it, and I, it was an accident. And we've done everything we can to help. And maybe if we heal this family, it, it won't be worth it. We'll never get your brother back. But it's it's something. So if you gotta kill me, you can kill me. But why don't you okay, talk to Garchomp first? As you say that, one of the, the, the one with the crossbow fires at you. <laughs> yeah. All right, so it does two damage to you. Okay. And the, the bolt sticks in your shoulder, and as it hits you, Gartok goes, wait, 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 wait. They didn't kill your brother. I did that. <gasps> the second I put that bracelet around his, his arm, I knew that was a possibility. And if I were you, I would want my dad to tell me what he was feeling and what the true, mo his motivations were. And I, I didn't think of you as real kids. I just thought of you as extensions of labor as extensions of my own will, and I was lying to myself and telling myself that that by doing what I told you, I was making you stronger people, but that wasn't the case. So I'm going to let you guys make your own decisions within a certain boundary <laughs> until you're adults, parentheses, and don't buy store brand toy bag, bag and cheese. So whatever you want to do, I'm fine with, because I would also want to have the that kind of choice in my life. And um, Sylvan and Reese kind of exchange glances, uh, and they go, you're very 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 bad person it's only because draken he's the reason why we put those bracelets on you instead of just slitting your throat so it's only because he's dead that you get to live and if we ever see you again we are going to kill you and that goes for all you assholes too <laughs> I, I get it and uh, i forgive you for shooting me by the way i'm not sorry you killed our brother very quickly, here are the places we're going to be going to get our kids. So uh, just that, just know that that's where we're going, and we do have to go there. So if we see you by accident, we'll just pretend we don't see you. But like we might be there. It's kind of like running into an ex at a party or something like that. You don't have to talk to us or kill us. Yeah, we can't all be invisible dragons, Gar talk. Fine, fine. I don't know what we're going to do with our goddamn lives. We can't. I do have one follow up question. Y you mentioned something about a person in a purple robe. <laughs> <laughs> we all. We all kind of had a shared dream last night about a person. Leave, to, uh, leave or I'm going to kill you okay, right okay. now. Pushing it. We'll go. Just We're going to go. go. Good luck with your life. Sorry about your brother. Uh, Gartok seems like you got what you deserved. Let's go. I go up to Gartok and say, hey, thanks again for all the help. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> 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 and I, I open up the minivan and... Uh, all right, guys, let's uh, get in and I guess head to Neverwinter. Hey, guys, how'd you think that one went? I felt like that went pretty well. I think we should head to Neverwinter and maybe, maybe we, what did you guys all learn today? I think I learned to uh, maybe look before I leap a little bit more. Next time we see a dragon, let's just kill them all. <laughs> I wish I had. I think you three would have been good dads to talk to when I was first raising my boy. 
Um, I think I learned that sometimes it's okay to let another dad save you. Thank you, Daryl. You're. I, I started. I turned on the radio and I started. <laughs> It's like the sound of static drowns out your tears as we drive off. (laughs) So you guys continue to drive as you sort of think about the day that you had. And after a couple of hours, you eventually come upon the city of Neverwinter. So you see a drawbridge. And on the drawbridge, you can see that there used to be a what seemed to be like a red and gold flag. um, But it's behind what is currently there, which is a very large, very lovingly rendered illustration of the doodler, the Whoa. mascot Whoa. of West Rock. <laughs> oh, shit. Elementary school. <laughs> Guys, did you see what? what I'm seeing? I told you those Montessori art lessons were going to pay off. <laughs> Dungeons and Daddies is Anthony Birch, Beth May, Matt Arnold, Will Campos, and myself, Freddie Wong. Theme song by Maxton Waller. Special thanks this week to Chad Ellis, creator of the Station Blue podcast, for uh, some editing advice. You find us on Twitter at Dungeons and Daddies and on Facebook, bit.ly slash Dungeon Dads. This is uh, the number one spot on Facebook to discuss both this podcast and Honda Odyssey minivan owners, like tips and tricks and stuff like that. This is where we gather. We're up now on Spotify and Google. Google Play. So for people who are not using the iTunes podcast app, you can hear us anywhere and everywhere now. So do spread the word. If you like what you heard, let someone else know. Tweet at us or uh, even better, leave a review for us uh, on iTunes. All of those things helps get this podcast out there and supports what we do. Thank you all so much for joining us this week. We'll be back in two weeks. Next episode, February 26th. We'll see you then. There was a time when you Never brought you down